How low an angle can you go? Hey y'all, I'm James Wright and welcome to my shop. Today I've got a special video for you. Um, we're going to be making this low angle jointer plane. Uh, it's about 19 inches long and it's a lot of fun. Now, some people are going to look at this and say, wait a second, that's not really a low angle. I mean, a low angle, is the planes are all the way down like there. Well, this is actually a low angle bevel down plane. And a while ago I was watching a video uh, by Rex Kruger and I suddenly saw myself on his video and he was making fun of me and I said, well, hey, if you ever want to do a collab, uh, let me know and we'll do that. So he contacted me and said, yeah, that'd be a great idea. And uh, so the two of us are going to be making low angle planes. And we both were intending on making a low angle bevel down plane. And uh, so this was a good opportunity to see two different ways of doing it. Mine is more of a long jointer. Um, his is a little bit shorter, more for like a shooting board or a miter plane. And if you want to see his video, I'll leave a link to that down below. You can also see it in the cards and at the end. Um, definitely go check out his channel. It's a really, really sweet channel. He does some fantastic talk throughs of why he chooses things, um, making tools cheaply, um, finding cheap tools, and uh, really doing things on a budget. It's really what his channel is about. So definitely go check out his channel and uh, you can see a link to that down below and up in the cards. So some people are going to be asking, um, why would you want a low angle bevel down when you can just go and grab a low angle bevel up plane anytime. One of the nice things about having a low angle bevel up is there's no chip breaker, there's less things to fiddle with, it's, it's really easy to set up and go. And also because the blade is so low and at such a low angle, you're shooting more in line with the blade, so the blade has less chance to chatter. Uh, whereas the higher that bed angle is, the more chatter you might get and the, the stronger your bed has to be, you have to have to do a better work on it. But if you turn the bevel the other way around, then you can put a chip breaker on it and you can get the chip breaker close to the mouth and then you can have a low angle plane that's actually better for some of your figured woods because you have a chip breaker close to the end, you can close up the mouth. And so this is not only a low angle plane that works well on end grains and things like that, but it will also do figured wood because the mouth is so tight and because there's a chip breaker close to the end. The other thing is a lot of people are gonna notice is that, well, this looks like it has a much, much lower angle than this does, but in actuality, this has a lower cutting angle. Because the bevel is down, the cutting angle is the same as your bed. So this one has a 30 degree cutting angle, which is incredibly low. The iron itself has a 25 degree angle bevel, but there's a 30 degree bed angle on here. So you're cutting at 30 degrees, which is incredibly low. Whereas with this one, there's a 12 degree bed angle, but the iron is cut at 25. So you have 25 plus 12, you're ending up with a 37 degree cutting angle. So this is seven degrees higher than this one, even though this one looks like it's at a higher angle, it actually cuts at a lower angle. So there's some pros and cons between the two, but I really wanted to have one in my arsenal that was a low angle with a chip breaker, and so that's where this video came from. So let's dive in and take a look at how to build it. I'm gonna be starting off with a block of rock maple as well as a hawk iron. Um, I really like the hawk irons. They just make everything a lot simpler than making your own, but I cover that in another video. First thing I wanna do is flatten one side, and that gives me a reference side that I can cut off of. This will end up being a block that is two and a half inches wide uh, by two inches tall. Um, it's gonna be a little shorter than some other wooden planes because it's a low angle. And then I can pull out my favorite Rubo style frame saw and rip this thing down the whole length. And yes, this is rock maple. It took me about uh, four or five minutes to cut it, but uh, it was well worth it. Really nice, I love how this stuff works. Just a beautiful, beautiful straight grained wood. Once I get one side straight, I now have a blank I can work with, and I can do all the layout marks that need to happen on this. Now, for a traditional layup like this, where you're not going to be doing the laminated side, there are a lot of marks you need to make, um, different wedge angles and different things that have to go into that. Um, I will be having these in the plans eventually, uh, so that you can actually see what all these angles are, but in this video, I'm going to skip all that uh, because it would take a lot more time. Basically, once I have it all uh, laid out, I can then start hogging out the material in the the, uh, the escapement here and I'll be chopping it out and cutting back and forth now this is a part that really scares a lot of people but if you take it step by step it goes a lot easier so start by using an auger bit and auger down at the angle that is drawn on the side just eyeballing it keeping away from the lines you're gonna hear me saying that a lot I keep away from the lines as long as possible and then I'm gonna come in with the chisel bevel up and chop out the waste in between the uh, the auger holes staying away from the lines i'm going to stay you know a good 
eighth inch or more away from the lines right now and we'll bring it back to those eventually. Right now I just want to open up the hole and make it functional. Next I can flip it over and start opening up the mouth. I'm going to cut this straight down. It's a very very tight mouth. I'm making it smaller than it needs to be because I can, I can always open it up later. I can't always make it bigger. <laughs> Once I have that open then I have something to eyeball from the other side and so I can start chopping down towards that mouth and getting all the lines lined up with exactly where that mouth ends up. And most of the time I'm just eyeballing down the chisel, down the side of the plane where I have those lines drawn and I just get a, a good eyeball line and it, it, gets, it comes out pretty close. The most important thing is the bed here and I'm going to start by cutting one line right down the middle that I know is perfectly straight from the top to the uh, corner of the mouth. Once that is there, then I can start cleaning out the majority of the material on either side of that line and starting to develop a really nice clean bed line. I file or a float, uh, I have a plain float here that also works very, very well at cleaning those out and giving you a nice smooth surface. Uh, because I'm having a chip breaker on here, there is a nut underneath that needs to have a little recess cut out for it. And that's just basically chopping out a small piece for it to fit in. The next thing I need to work on is the wedge. And I chose to work with some Ipe. Number one, it's a really nice, hard, heavy-duty wood. Uh, but number two, I had a scrap of it left over from SV Seeker, and so this turned out to be perfect. I dimensioned it to be the same width as the iron. Actually, it's ever so slightly wider because it's the width of the opening in the hole of the plane. Next, I need to cut the bevel on the wedge. This is a 10-degree bevel to match the 10-degree angle inside the escapement of the, of the plane. And this will fit into that wedge slot. And I'm just going to go at it with a uh, with a screw, with a rough plane and take off the majority of the waste, and then I'll come in with another plane and smooth it out. And basically, getting that angle as refined as possible. Occasionally, checking it in the mouth, making sure it fits, making sure it matches the actual angle of the iron. Uh, even if that angle is off one way or the other, as long as those two angles line up, that's what I need. Also, in the bottom of this, it needs to have a slot grooved out uh, so that the cap iron screw has a place to go. And so I'm just going to use a gouge and carve that out. Make sure that the, uh, the cap iron screw fits in there and slides nicely against that, uh, that wedge. Once I have that all done, I can put it in place and find out exactly where the mouth is, and I can open up the mouth until the, ch until the iron just barely peeks out of the hole. I want it to be really tight up close to the mouth because I can always make the mouth bigger, I can't always make the mouth smaller. Now we can actually test it. It's now a functioning plane. Uh, not the most comfortable thing in the world, but it takes shavings and I'm happy. I do also want to put a button on the front of this. Uh, because it's a wooden hand plane, uh, it's all adjusted by a mallet, and putting a button on the front makes the, the plane a little bit more durable, lasting a little longer. I figured since there's an ePay wedge, let's make an ePay button. So I'm cutting this square about uh, an inch and a quarter by about an inch and a quarter, and then I'll lay it out just like I do a butterfly or a dovetail key and uh, line it out on the front and recess it in. I, I don't have a router plane that will fit into this small of a space, so I'm going to use the chisel bevel down, and this will allow me to basically flatten out the bottom of the surface, and I'm going to keep working at it until I get it fairly close. Uh, it takes a little bit of work to wiggle into the corners and make everything nice and tight, and then I'm also going to be using the, uh, the diving end of the caliper to check the depth until I get it down to exactly where I want it to be. I want this to be slightly proud so that it hits the button rather than the surface around it. And I'm going to be using high glue on this one because I can easily clean it off and the high glue is finished transparent. Now it's time to start making it comfortable. I'm going to start by gouging out a lot of the material on the back, making it rounded over to fit the hand, and then I'll come in with a rasp and a finer file and a finer file, and I'll start refining that shape. I want it to stay basically that rectangular shape, but I want it to be comfortable, so I'm going to occasionally be checking it with my hand and making sure that's what I want. Once I get it close, then I can start coming in with the files, and refining that edge more and more and more. Uh, this really is where a lot of the time is spent, but if you do it well, it ends up being a really nice tool that uh, is very comfortable and, and fun to use. On the front, it's a little bit different because I'm right-handed. I want to actually have a weird grip, so my thumb comes over the side and holds on. So I'm going to be doing basically the exact same thing, but I'm going to be spending a lot more time with the gouge, um, cleaning out and shaping and sculpting it, then occasionally putting my hand there and checking it, and then going back and sculpting some more and going back and forth uh, until I get the shape right about where I want it. So on this side, it'll be a thumb hole, and the other side will be where my palm sits, so it'll kind of be an S shape on the front. 
I'll be hitting with all the files and card scrapers and then even this spot where the thumb is at, there's actually a little divot in there. So I'm going to use this riffler to get into that concave area. The uh, last bit of carving are the eyes on either side of the escapement. Uh, these are basically little, uh, little spaces that allow your fingers to get down in there a little bit closer so you can clean out any chips that might get stuck. And it's just as simple as grabbing a gouge and running it along that. Trying to make both eyes look parallel and the same just takes a little bit more time. I'm going to chamfer both of the top corners with a very heavy chamfer, and that just gives it that final finishing touch. And from this point on, it's just about the details, cleaning it all up and getting it ready for, for finish. So I'll be using a card scraper for most of it. Uh, I will be using sandpaper for a lot of the, uh, the wrapped and warped areas, but the card scraper works really well for a lot of those little details. On the sides, I'm going to use a finishing plane and smooth them all up, get rid of any marks, any of the, uh, the marking knife lines, all of that stuff that was put onto the plane for its design now can get removed and uh, can reveal that really nice finished surface. For me, a hand tool, the best finish you can get is boiled linseed oil and paste wax. I know a lot of people are going to be complaining that I use this too much, but it's just a really great finish. It really brings out the color. It's very simple. It's very easy, and it feels good in the hand afterwards. It's a, a very simple finish that I enjoy. I'll put a couple coats of boiled linseed oil on there, let it dry, and then come back in and put the paste wax on. Let that soak in for a little while and then buff it off. Get a nice, fairly protective finish that can be easily renewed. Now that the finish is on it, we can actually go about flattening the sole. This is the very last touch before it is a functional plane. I'm going to flatten it with a jointer. You could do it with sandpaper on a glass or something of that nature, but since I have a jointer plane, I'll just do that. Some winding sticks let you know when it's true. And then it's time to play. Oh, the fun part. I love watching the curls come off of this. And even in something simple like this with the pine, uh, it's, it's still a pleasure to just watch these curls run. I probably did it for a good five or six minutes. Uh, pass after pass after pass, watching the curls come, and just an absolute joy of the new tool that was brought to life. Uh, I, this is this is what it's all about right here is the fun part and uh, for those of you complaining about pine being too soft um, I even used this on some ingrain of white oak and was able to pull some really nice curls with this uh, very very happy with how this came across being the low angle and here you can see some of the uh, the curls coming out of this full length ingrain curls that I am really really happy with <laughs> so there you go I'm really happy with how this came out and it, it Planes, just gorgeous. I'm really, really happy. It's got a lot of good feel to it. Um, in your hands, it's it's comfortable. I really enjoy this, and you're probably going to see it in a few upcoming videos because um, I'm loving it. This is this is kind of fun. Uh, and now, some of you might say there was a lot of other details and things you skipped. I am going to be turning this build into a longer format video in the future so that I'll be going into several series on the very details of ins and outs of how it's done. I will also have plans in the future uh, with those later videos where we'll go into every specifics of this and show you exactly how everything is cut out. Um, so if you want to see that information, it will be coming in the future. But uh, yeah, that's about it. I do want to say definitely go check out Rex's channel. I'll leave a link to that down below as well as in the cards. Uh, I really like how his came out. Kind of has some unusual materials and it really ended up being a cool, cool plane. Uh, so his channel is fantastic, and every time he puts out a video, I'm there watching it. And uh, yeah, that's about it for today. I do want to say thank you to the patrons on Patreon. If you'd like to find out more about that, help out this channel and help us grow, you can find out more down there. Feel free to check out my channel and Rex's channel right up here. And until next time, have a wonderful day.